Last week, Victoria Police claimed to have had some sort of a breakthrough using the undercover investigation of officials with Tennis Australia. A young Englishman, Daniel Dobson, was arrested and taken off to court for allegedly illegal betting activity at the Melbourne Open Tennis. Well, this morning, the Financial Review have tracked down his bosses, who have agreed to speak to us on the radio this morning too. Stephen High is the CEO of Sporting Data Limited. He says, we stand by our employee. He was doing nothing wrong. And there's nothing wrong with what we do either. Stephen, good morning to you. Good morning. What is it that you do? What was your man doing at the Australian Open? Um, what, what Dan was doing, he was sending back information uh, to our, um, uh, through our models. Because um, what we do is model uh, tennis and uh, try to predict uh, what the betting odds should be on a match, uh, individual match outcome. In order to do that most effectively, we do that best when we have the most up-to-date information, um, and that is why we send people courtside to try and get that information back. Um, and, yes, we place bets based on the information he sends us back. So is he giving you information about people betting on individual points? No, we don't bet on individual points. We only bet on the match outcome. The whole of the match? That's correct. We'll only bet on the match outcome. So as the match is in progress, the fluctuations point by point, why is that so vital well, what to, we to get that information estimate, even just seconds ahead of traditional media? Well, what we do is estimate what the odds on a particular match will be um, at any stage in the, in the uh, match. And, uh, so we will say uh, maybe it's 15.40 in the second game, we will have an estimation of what the odds should be based on that score. We will then look one point ahead and see what it should be um, if player A wins or player B wins uh, the next point, and then we will uh, try and get to be the first to offer the revised odds um, when the point has, uh, point has been decided. Um, and by being the first uh, to offer those odds, you get a better chance of being matched on the betting exchanges such as Betfair. How much money swings on an individual match if it's not an individual point that you're taking odds on? Um, well, it's a bit difficult to say because obviously it varies dramatically. Yeah, yeah, but typically? Um, on, on Betfair, I would imagine that they would match on a first round um, Oz Open match somewhere around 250,000 uh, UK pounds. Even on a minor game on an outside court? It depends um, how one-sided the match is. So, for example, Andy Murray versus Go Sueda, um would have been a very one-sided match. So the, I, I would expect it to have been less than that, but um, it may well have been more. Um, but on, on a match which is fairly evenly balanced, you would expect that to be a particular interest. And, and uh, yes, it could e easily be even on a fairly minor match, you would, you would get that much matched. Are you providing this information on to other bookies as well? No, no. We use it for our own use. Um, the, the setup's a little bit uh, obscure in that we have a company who itself does not bet. However, we're directors of that company. On our personal accounts, we bet. But um, the, uh, the reason for that is to comply with UK gambling re uh, regulations and to become as tax efficient as possible. But you also have to comply with the gambling regulations in every country where you operate, including, of course, here in Australia when you're working here. That's correct. And you say you um, would... We, well, we don't place bets from Australia. Um, I don't think we've ever placed bets from Australia. Um, we simply take the information from Australia and then uh, place bets from another um, server. This has been widely reported here in Australia as your employee being the front man for some sort of undercover or illegal operation, the likes of which we've seen influencing other sports, including here professional soccer and cricket from time to time, not just in Australia, particularly, though, of course, in the subcontinent. Yes, absolutely, and I'm, I'm very disappointed to see that coverage there. We are not trying in any way to influence the outcome of any match. In fact... Um, it's very damaging for us to see matches that are corrupt. Um, and we would, um, in fact, I strongly welcome the law he's been charged under um, in that, you know, really sh it, 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 it's good to see action being taken against people who are fixing matches and trying to cheat the outcome of, of matches. But we weren't trying to do that. Um, and so this is entirely inappropriate. And in fact, you know, the, this, this sort of activity... 
um, has been uh, used uh, has it does take place in other sports. Um, it's quite widespread in the UK um, in in specific um, sports. Um, I, I find it slightly odd that they targeted tennis because I think had they targeted, for example, cricket, that would have been a, a very different outcome to to um, what what we've seen here. Mr. High, if your employee Daniel Dobson was doing nothing wrong, why was he operating the equipment that he's alleged to have with him surreptitiously and away from anybody's scrutiny? What we're saying is he was doing nothing illegal. Now, to be fair, you know, and and it's something I'm um, disappointed at, or or at least I've got to review in my own mind whether we we should have done it or not, uh, we were violating the terms and conditions of the um, tickets because... Um, the terms and conditions of the tickets don't allow you to transmit data from the court side. Um, however, I don't really see why that is, because we're not causing any loss or harm uh, to either ticket, uh, to tennis authorities um, or, or anyone else, as far as I can see. However, it has been the case. We have had um, some of our court side analysts thrown out um, of other tournaments before. Would it so be we that... wanted to be as covert as possible. Would it be that Tennis Australia would require you to pay some sort of access fee or a different form of entry if you're there for commercial purposes rather than as a spectator? They've never um, suggested that, that that was an available option. In fact, that would be an interesting option for it were it, were it to be available. There's no way we can get hold of this data. Um, and the registered bookmakers are provided with the data although not quite as quick as we get it. But um, but they pay a fee uh, for it, and you're trying to get it on a spectator's ticket rather than yeah, paying so we, a fee. we've approached um, the company uh, who provides this data, Enet Pulse, and I'm afraid they, they can't sell us the data because we're not a regulated bookmaker. Hmm. So you're seeing so this we then... Can't, we can't get the data. They couldn't. No. We, we can't buy the data, even if we uh, wanted to. OK, either way, this could be a commercial tussle rather than one to do with illegal, covert or underhand operations. We see it in a different perspective. Well, the court ultimately will decide. Have you had discussions with uh, uh, the legal authorities here in Australia on behalf of your employee just finally? Yes, I've, uh, the legal advice is, is very strong in our favour um, that I've seen. Um, and um, we, we really think that charges should be dropped now because I, I think this, this court case has little chance of succeeding from the Victorian police. Uh, meanwhile, your employee is on bail and required to stay. Our employee is on bail. He's obviously very worried. His family are very worried. And um, we we really would like to see the end of this as soon as possible because, you know, he's done, he's done nothing illegal. We'll see where it goes to. Thank you for your explanations this morning. Thank you very much. Stephen High, who is the CEO in London of Sporting Data Limited.